Hello everyone, uh, my name is Carl Travis and I'm today launching a brand new uh, YouTube channel called Triple Helix. So I'm a late convert to theme park enthusiasts, only really became an enthusiast last October. Um, the name of the channel, Triple Helix, comes about because um, myself, my son Zachary and daughter Jemima are three of us, that's hence the triple, and we love the Helix roller coaster in Leeseyburg where we went quite recently. Pleasure Beach Experience, so hence the name of the channel. Um, we're here today, or at least I'm here today, in Colorado, at the University of Colorado, uh, where I'm attending a conference, the Plymouth Physical Properties Symposium of Work, and given that we're near Denver, it seemed silly not to visit Lakeside Amusement Park, so I thought I'd kick off my uh, vlogging experience with a visit to this old, uh, old style amusement park. Like I said, this is um, a relatively new thing for me, never vlogged before, um, it's a bit of a plunge into the unknown, um, so if this sucks, uh, you can just give me a, a dislike if you want, um, leave a comment. Um, so, as I said today, shortly we're going to go to Lakeside Amusement Park, I'll try and take some on-ride footage for you, and film around the park, uh, this is a less, less well-known theme park uh, for us to visit give a shout out to some of the uh, bloggers that have inspired me. Uh, I, as I said, I started becoming an enthusiast last October and it was really uh, booking a trip to the Florida, th Florida theme parks that got me watching other people's blogs and I've been inspired by Theme Park Worldwide, um, Andy Rum Rumney aka Coaster Crazy Andy uh, and laterally Pleasure Beach Experience, who I've joined and now I've joined the Roller Coaster Club of Great Britain. Big shout out for Pleasure Beach Experience, and Scott and Mike are fantastic. Um, I've learned so much from them, been to some great meetups. Early in the season, we one of the first people to ride the Icon Roller Coaster, which is an amazing uh, coaster for Blackpool. And then more recently, we went to Liseberg in Sweden, had an absolutely cracking weekend there. Uh, which is where we realise that Helix is my personal favourite roller coaster, and I think that goes uh, for both both of my kids as well. Okay, I'll leave it there. Next time I'm in front of the camera, we'll be at the front entrance of Lakeside Amusement Park. See you later. Afternoon, everyone. So, after two bus journeys, we've finally made it to Lakeside Amusement Park here in. Denver, Colorado. So I'm here today with Amanda, my PhD student. I'll just show you. So in a moment we'll go inside and now try and film these classic coasters. There's about four coasters to, to try. And I'll film some of the architecture because it's quite interesting. There's some art deco architecture. We'll just go inside. So we're just gonna have a go on Cyclone. It's a wooden roller coaster that dates back to I think 19, around 1940. The track length is about 2,200 feet and the drop height is 80 feet. And it lasts about two, two plus minutes. It's a bit like Big Dipper's length, I think. <laughs>
just had a meal, burritos, cheeseburger, root beer and Pepsi in this quite charming little cafe. The whole place reminds you of bits of Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the older sign there, um, FY, FY4, is that right? The music you can hear is from a merry-go-round. I'll just turn the camera around. It's an old-style merry-go-round. I'll zoom in on that later. the same differential that you get on some of the Blackpool coasters, oh. whereas a ride in the front and the back are completely different. Are the trains longer? Yeah, the trains are longer. <laughs> the Cyclone coaster reminds me of Nickelodeon Streak at Blackpool, that's the closest one I can think to it. I'm going to try the spider. This looks like an old fairground type of ride. There used to be one at Blackpool's, very similar, I think. Stood in front of the fun house. Let's give it a try. Mechanica and Loki then at Lissyburg. <laughs> That's alright, fresh air is helping too. <laughs> and there's plenty of art. the smell of diesel fumes. Yeah, okay, the diesel fumes are not helping. <laughs> Although it makes you slightly high, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> The sun's come out after a treacherous afternoon of rain and hail. Quite cool, it's now nice and sunny. The place seems to look a lot better when it's sunny.
for your driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why have they left the empty cars in the middle? This is like traffic traffic. Right? Yeah. somebody found a drop tower I'm gonna have a go on that in a moment just film it going up and dropping down so while that's just going up in the frame is the ferris wheel and then behind that is a new ride well it's not really new they bought it from another theme park and it's going to be called the Big O it's a Pinfari Zyklon 64 I think it is it looks quite fun but that's not open at the moment Yeah, I've recorded that one. I've done that one. Bye guys, bye! My sister went twice. Twice? This is what I need, I'm 10! And then I'm going for 11! Two more! And then, I don't really care to go for all of them. Go after this, because I'm going one more time after this! You can wait in line now.
filming. This is one brave kid, because let me tell you, this ride is very, very forceful. You come right out of your seat. That's the most airtime I've ever experienced on a drop tower ever before. It's far more scary than Falcon's Fury, and yet it's only about a half or a third of the height. Is the Wild Chipmunk. It's a steel wild mouse type coaster built in 1953. So we're going to give this one a try. So this is the wild chipmunk, which is a steel wild mouse, got you some on-ride footage of that. It's really quite raucous this ride, lots of lateral G's with those sharp uh, turns. Makes you kind of miss the Blackpool wild mouse, which is a cut above every steel mouse I've ever been on. Unfortunately there's nobody riding round on it at the moment, so I can't take any footage. Most of the rides today have been walk-on, which is not surprising, it's a small backwater amusement park. So we're about done today in the park, I'm just going to go around and show you a few of the buildings. This is some interesting architecture, one or two of the other rides that I haven't filmed. This ride here is a whip, I think we had one of these at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. But by now you'll be getting the impression that this is like an old style, classic American amusement park. Looks kind of dilapidated, but in a sort of nice, charming way. So this building over here is a Dodgems. It's called Auto Scooter. American classic. Just have a peer inside. I'll get you some on-ride footage. Over there's the Dragon Coaster. The park's got five coasters. This is really a kiddie coaster, although it's not officially known as a kiddie coaster. But it's a very short track layout, it doesn't go particularly quick. But a credit's a credit. Just look at the architecture on the Cyclone Coast, that reminds me of the Grand National at Blackpool. Over here we've got a merry go round which I think has stood as long as the park's been open, so 1908 plus something like that. time to wrap up this video today 
So all in all, it's been a nice afternoon here at Lakeside Amusement Park in Denver. Um, it's not somewhere where I would recommend people make a special trip for, but if you're in the vicinity, if you're in Denver particularly, uh, it's certainly worth a visit. It's worth a visit for two reasons, the Cyclone, three reasons in fact. There's a Cyclone wooden roller coaster, which while it doesn't have any air time, has lots of lateral g-forces. It's quite um, a raucous wooden roller coaster. Then the second reason is the wild chipmunk, the steel wild mouse. That's a very good coaster. And the third reason is a drop tower. Now it just looks like any other drop tower, but it literally throws you out of your seat. It's, it's the most terrifying drop tower I've ever been on. And I've been on Falcon's Fury, Atmosphere, uh, and a few others. So yes, for those three reasons it's worth a visit if you're in Denver. The rest of the park is worth visiting simply because of the architecture, the Art Deco features. You get a very nostalgic feeling, it's that classic American uh, carnival type theme park, which is fast disappearing. This is, I think, the oldest store, one of the oldest theme parks in Colorado and it's one of the very few family-owned theme parks left in the United States of America. It's probably not going to be here in a few years' time, but having said that, they've just purchased the Big O, the Pinfari Zyklon Coaster, which is standing but not operating at the moment. So that gives you reason to suspect that the park might invest a little bit of money in the future. OK, so I think with that, I'm going to head off back close this video down so when I've edited all this together it'll appear on the new channel called Triple Helix I'll post this on Twitter and I hope you like it apologies if, if the standards not great it's the first vlog I've ever done uh, can only get better from here okay thank you bye